It's 1939 and World War II breaks out in Europe. Within a couple of years, the global conflict spread southwards from China to Southeast Asia as the Japanese Imperial Army scaled up their offensives in the region, thus dragging in countries like Sri Lanka, known back then as Ceylon, which were at the time colonies of the British Empire. British casualties were evacuated from active war zones to the east and brought to Ceylon. This new dynamic changed the island from being mostly a shipping and trading hub into a crucial support base for the war effort. Colombo at the time was a developing port city and was also residence to almost all the people of prominence during that era. The Durden's property, located at number three Alfred Place, was one of many affluent colonial style houses on the coast and thus was commandeered by the British Navy to serve as a makeshift field hospital to perform surgical and medical care for its wounded troops. Nineteen forty five, Britain and its allies won the war and thus having no further use for a military hospital, they hastily and unceremoniously abandoned it. 1948, Ceylon gains independence and the British abandon their erstwhile colony. Seeing a unique opportunity to fill a growing need in quality private healthcare, a group of young medical practitioners took up the helm of the British military's abandoned operation and incorporated it as Ceylon Hospitals Limited. The hospital retained the name, Durden's, as that was the original name of the property and having a historic link to the original Durden's mansion in Surrey, England. The first board was formed comprising of five founding directors. Dr. C. C. De Silva, who became the company's first chairperson. Dr. L. S. C. Mendes, who was appointed managing director. Dr. P. Kulasinger, Dr. C. L. Bartholomews, and Dr. C. L. X. Mutukumaru served as the remaining board members. Starting with fledgling facilities such as a one-man blood-testing laboratory occupying a former office and a small nurse's quarters on the second floor consisting of a converted bedroom, Durden's hospital grew but was primarily a maternity hospital which welcomed the newest members of the community into the world. Upon further expansion, 1968 saw the opening of a new dedicated maternity care ward and outpatient department. The 1970s were right around the corner and brought with them very turbulent times. Ceylon, which became Sri Lanka in 1972, was undergoing the growing pains of a newly independent nation-state. Durden's hospital became a frontline participant in the fallout from the violence. The nursing team risked life and limb, remaining steadfast in their responsibilities, working under stressful conditions while being heavily under-resourced. The coming years saw the establishment of a new pediatric ward, surgical ward and operating theatre complex, as well as a radiology department. In 1986, at the behest of a young, persistent doctor at the time, Dr. Preeti Vijayagunavardhana, an informal ICU was established with just two beds and through over 20 years of hardship emerged a battle-hardened hospital with highly skilled and experienced healthcare professionals.
It's now 1991 and something interesting happened. A new chairman was appointed, the youngest to be so appointed in the history of Durban's. Mr. Ajit Tudawa, who brought no medical experience to the role, however, brought something far more valuable, a vision. Durban's management and its able chairman had a vision and he fulfills that vision in stages. Upon taking up the leadership role, he realized the road ahead would be long and challenging. In order to grow, one must first clean up the current operation. Using a very hands-on approach, he began the task of modernizing and streamlining the administrative functions of the hospital. As an independent director, our views are sought in terms of challenging the current procedures and policies. And we can also dissent on some of the decisions the executive directors may be making. Another aspect which I admire is the patient care and the amount of emphasis at boardroom on this. Uh, just to give you an example, the investment in the car park, which was over 1 billion rupees, one could argue could have been utilized to get a higher return. But the directors were adamant that patient care and convenience is paramount, and the investment went through. A lot of discussion and deliberations were had on Vision 2022, and a sizable investment is made. And here again, Durden's are seeing what is important in the future, not only from a building or a Durden's brand point of view, but also in terms of patient care. The next two decades saw the organic growth of the hospital from a basic primary facility into a fully functional, modern tertiary hospital that provided a spectrum of everyday healthcare services to the public. In 1995, the first bold new strategic initiative was devised to introduce a dedicated heart centre concept to Sri Lanka. Lawrence Sudawa was one of my most trusted and respected friends. He headed a very successful construction business. Derns became a household name for healthcare. Derns was the first private hospital in our country to establish international standard heart centre. The heart centre was started about 20 years back. In the private sector, there was no one who, who sort of originated the concept of total heart surgery. And then it was able to bring in this. To the, to the public, in the private sector. And it was a tremendous success at that time. The problem of financing was challenging, with very few private investors willing to risk such a bold step. As the Durden's Heart Centre was a pioneering effort of setting up a dedicated heart centre in the country, private equity investors were asking for high rates of return and uh, it was a challenging time convincing them to come in at a reasonable rate of return. I was invited to invest in Durban's a few years ago. I gladly welcomed the opportunity because I saw the oldest private hospital in the country and how patients visiting the hospital for daycare or other services came away comfortable and happy that they received a fair deal. And the results of Durden's in the consequent years was phenomenal. The Durden's Heart Center began a trail of success stories for Durden's and it was indeed a quantum leap for the organization. In all three key financial indicators of the top line, bottom line, and net assets, 
learns have achieved a compounded annual growth rate of around 20%, which is well over the rate of inflation and indicates real growth. In the case of Durden's, they give a fair return on the investor's money, but also it is ethical in its practices. Therefore, I did not have any hesitation in making an investment. 1996, Durden's formed a strategic alliance with the largest freestanding heart institute in Asia. In uh, establishing the heart center, identifying a suitable partner was an important aspect. Chairman Chief Executive Tajit Tudave uh, researched various parts of the world, particularly in our region and in India, to look at a heart center which had uh, a good track record of success and the right kind of uh, blend with the facility that we had in Colombo. This partnership enabled renowned heart specialists from India as well as support medical staff to cycle back and forth, performing cardiac surgeries in Sri Lanka, while at the same time training local medical staff with such procedures and equipment. The expansion did not stop there. In 1999, in order to meet the demands for accurate, reliable and quick results, Durden's Laboratories embarked on an island-wide expansion by developing its lab network under the leadership of Mr. Upul Tudawa, who headed the Laboratory Services and Diagnostic Unit at Durden's. In 2003, it was time to go public. Ceylon Hospitals became a publicly quoted company on the Colombo Stock Exchange. Durden's now was able to move ahead to the next step, the gold standard for healthcare in Sri Lanka. Quality standards were continued to be pushed to new levels, while services and equipment were constantly upgraded to be on par with the developed Western world. 2011, Durden's sixth lane wing was completed and started serving the community. 2014, Durden's became the first hospital in Sri Lanka to be accredited with the gold seal of approval by the Joint Commission International, JCI, which is the highest possible accreditation in healthcare delivery and an honor bestowed on world-renowned hospitals in the Asia-Pacific region and the USA. This was followed shortly by establishment of the Durden's Neurology and Neurosurgery Unit and a specialist rehabilitation and wellness center. The year is now 2017 and Durden's embarks on the Vision 2022 project. The Vision 2022 project sets out to transform the landscape of the hospital via extensive infrastructure development to an unmatched, purpose-built healthcare facility and dramatically increase the depth and breadth of the hospital's healthcare services. Upon completion of Vision 2022, Durden's will become one of the largest standalone private hospitals in the country, with patient care being par excellence and occupying a total floor area of around 490,000 square feet of fully compliant infrastructure according to JCI and other global standards. Looking back, the journey has been one of immense growth, from humble beginnings to being recognized as a premium service provider with a heritage focused on quality patient care. Turns Vision 2022 will bring new dimensions to Medicare. So the present financial crisis and political instability has brought a lot of uh, challenges to businesses. 
but Durden's have continued its ethical journey and continued its success story. And as of 2023, Durden's net asset value has increased approximately 445 fold in comparison to the 1995 financial year. I feel Dern is poised to have a tremendous growth in the future because of the fact that Dern is now fully equipped with all the decisions that are required, including neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, muscular surgery, more than any other hospital Dern has operated. So far, six chairpersons have held positions at the helm of the organization to guide the hospital to the purpose-built tertiary healthcare institution. And at no time in the past has Durden's ever compromised on quality and compassionate care. Durden's have always believed in doing their share for the country and contributing to the growth of the country's economy. I have no doubt that Durden will reach the pinnacle of the healthcare industry, not only in Sri Lanka, but in the entire South Asian region. As of today, Durden's has medical services which are recognized by foreigners uh, visiting us from different countries in the region in particular, seeking surgical and other services of medical care. What I really value is the enterprise governance framework which is in place in all hospital companies. Its business, I could say, is ethical and sustainable, which is very important today. And it is going to be a great success in the future. Looking to the future and the challenges that lie ahead, Durden's prides itself as the standard bearer of healthcare in Sri Lanka. And despite it all, we at Durden's will always remain dedicated to you.